Today I'm here to discuss depression, what it is, the signs to look for, and tips to assist you in getting the help you need if you find yourself struggling with the question, am I depressed? Because while it's normal to experience sadness and to feel down during certain periods of your life, depression is an entirely different animal. Hi, I'm Jordan Travers. I'm a licensed clinical psychotherapist and the clinical director at Awake Therapy. If you'd like to make an appointment with a member of the Awake Therapy team or me, you can do so by clicking on the link in the description. So let's jump right into some of the things that therapists like myself look for when a client or patient is wondering if they're depressed. Examples of statements we pay attention to are, one, I feel like nothing will get better and there's nothing I can do to make a difference. Two. I have no interest in spending time with friends or family. I barely leave my home or room. Three, I'm experiencing either significant weight loss or weight gain. Four, I have trouble sleeping at night, or I'm up all night and sleep during the day, or I struggle to get out of bed. Five, everything is irritating me and I can't control it. I feel like I'm going to snap. Six, I feel like it takes me forever to do the things that used to take me only a few minutes. Seven, I feel like I'm always screwing up and I'll never be good enough. Eight, my body is constantly aching. And nine, I'm having difficulty concentrating and remembering things. These statements may sound familiar to you or leave you wondering, hey, are you sure these comments aren't more closely related to anxiety or attention deficit disorder? And yes, you're right. That's because depression, anxiety, and attention deficit disorders such as ADD and ADHD often go hand in hand. Our depression, anxiety, or ADD, ADHD symptoms are typically different from other people we know struggling with these mental health conditions. That's why it's important to speak to a licensed mental health professional to engage in treatment for these conditions versus self-medicating and trying to manage these symptoms on your own. Because there are other reasons you could be potentially feeling depressed. You could be experiencing bipolar depression, otherwise known as manic depression, which is characterized by severe mood shifts that last days and go from mania to depression. It's often misdiagnosed or left mistreated if we only reach out to mental health professionals when we're experiencing a low episode. So you might be wondering, well, what type of depression do I have? Depression, like many DSM-5 disorders, has many different types and levels of severity, ranked as either mild, medium, or severe. And while this might seem confusing and complicated, knowing what type you have could help you to manage your symptoms and to assist you in getting the most appropriate treatment. Let's start with discussing mild to moderate depression, otherwise known as dysthymia. Dysthymia is characterized by feeling blue or sad more days than not, having low self-esteem with the lack of interest in engaging in activities. This doesn't mean that you won't have days where you experience a stable mood, it's just that you're feeling restless most days. This then leads us to severe depression, otherwise known as major depressive disorder, which is characterized by lasting typically around six months or more. A person can be diagnosed with MDD and have only a single episode, but most with MDD experience reoccurring episodes. And the last type of depression I'm gonna cover in this video is seasonal affective disorder, otherwise known as SAD, which is a form of depression that affects one to 2% of the population and comes on during the fall and winter months in response to less sunlight, which means that in spring and summer, you feel more energized, motivated, and like yourself. And in fall and winter, you feel more restless, disconnected, and blue. And there are a variety of causes and risk factors that can contribute to us feeling depressed as well. Things like taking certain medications, like blood pressure medicine, or other health-related issues like hypothyroidism. Depression is typically the result of many different factors, including biological, psychological, and environmental factors. And despite what you've maybe seen or heard on television and magazine ads, Depression isn't something that will be cured with a pill because psychotropic medications are not preventative medicine, which means that they can assist you in managing the severity of your symptoms and how they impact your day-to-day -day functioning, but still they won't magically make your depression go away. Other risk factors that can make you susceptible to feeling depressed include one, feeling lonely and isolated, not having close family or friends available to talk to or see. Two, relationship problems, fighting, divorce, and a, or an abusive relationship. Three, stressful life events, the loss of a job, the death of a loved one, or financial stress. Four, a family history of depression. While there's no one specific depression gene, 
Growing up in a home with mental illness present could have left you struggling to develop and build on healthy coping skills. Five, childhood trauma. Early life stressors of abuse, bullying, or trauma can make you more susceptible to developing depression as an adult. And last, substance use, which is often used to self-medicate symptoms of depression and is a double-edged sword because substance use increases your risks of becoming depressed post-use. And consider this as a friendly reminder, alcohol is a depressant. So how do you get better? There are lots of different things you can do to lift and stabilize your, your mood. You can do things like move your body for 45 to 60 minutes each day, which is a treatment prescribed by physicians outside of the US because research has shown that exercise is the most effective coping skill for mild to moderate depression. Two, you can spend the majority of your day outside of your home, whether that's meeting up with friends, learning a new hobby, or volunteering for a cause you're passionate about. Three, you can improve your diet and sleep, restrict caffeine consumption, eat more fruits and vegetables, and aim to get seven to nine hours of sleep each night. And last four, talk to a mental health professional. No, you don't have to overwhelm yourself with trying to do all of these things at once. The key is to start somewhere because feeling better takes time and you can start to help yourself getting better by making positive lifestyle choices in your life starting today. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this content helpful and informative. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to receive updates when a new video is posted. And remember, the content addressed in these videos is educational and is not meant to be a substitute for individualized psychotherapy. If you need mental health assistance, whether to address a current issue or to create a more prosperous and fulfilling life, Go to the link in the description and schedule a free initial consultation. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye.